for this fishing lure I'm going to wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol. It'll leave it nice and clean and it'll be ready for the next step and we'll dry that with a hairdryer. You may need to use an adhesion promoter depending on the lures you have or even sanding. I reckon it's time to do a green lure. So what we're going to do is we're going to undercoat this lure with Autoborn Sealer Green. We're going to reduce that by about 20% with High Performance Reducer and we're going to put down a couple of coats. We'll dry that in between coats and for our hardware we're going to use the old Watson Neo TRN2. It's a 0.5mm which is well suited to these paints and it's a trigger airbrush. So it's very much like a spray gun you pull back from material. When you release the trigger it stops the material and the airflow. So if you're not an airbrush artist it's a great airbrush you get results straight away and if you're an accomplished airbrush artist this is still an excellent choice. We're going to give this fishing lure some real bling so we've used Auto Air Colors Spark Alescent Toxic Green. I've reduced it by about 10%, we'll give it a couple of really good coats and we'll dry that in between coats and when this is clear coated you wait until you see how this one looks. We've now switched over to our Neo TRM1, it's a 0.35mm which allows me a little bit more control over the spray pattern and we've got that loaded with AutoWear Colors Semi Opaque Dark Green. We've reduced that by about 10% and we're just going to work the top of the lure only here, we're just going to go right down the whole flank of the top and then we're just going to blend slightly down the sides. Time for a little bit of stencil magic, so what we've done is we've got our AutoWear Colors Snacks Fishing Lure Stencil Set and we've grabbed the one out which has got the gill rakes on the side that match the size of this lure and we've taped up around the outside the gill rakes so we can just paint in the area we want so with the same airbrush with the dark green in it still we're just going to put it in one coat and then we're going to dry that using the compressed air from the airbrush and then we're going to put in another heavier coat and then we're going to swap sides before you go doing the other side guys this is a helpful tip for you because the paint on the stencil itself is going to be slightly tacky if you go stick that on the other side of the lure because you've got to reverse the stencil it's going to stick to the lure so if you go to the spray accessory section on the website at airbrushmegastore.com grab yourself some big wipes pick out one of those put a little bit of high performance reducer on it and wipe down your stencil the paint will come off within five to ten seconds dry it off you can now see exactly through your stencil again perfect for relocating the other side and no paint transfer I want to give this lure some character all of its own so I've grabbed the Artul Scalafina nano stencils and I've masked up with some of the lines are and I just want to go randomly down the side of the flanks creating lines so I've taped up about four different ones so I've got different patterns and then after that what we're going to do is we're going to use the edge of this stencil and we're going to spray, still using the dark green, we're just going to spray a line down the side which will be all random shapes and then we're going to move it down and do it again. So to give it dimension further again I'm going to then move the stencil down lower on the lure and I'm going to create the same. So it will be two different line patterns running all the way down the side of the flank with those direct dark lines behind it. time for the last step on this particular lure. We've gone back to our TRN2, the 0.5mm, and we've reloaded that with the AutoWear Color Sparkalescent Toxic Green. And we're going to put another coat over the top of the whole thing. Now, being that it's a reasonably transparent color when it's over the top of something dark, you can go reasonably heavy here if you want to, depending on how much sparkle you want, or you can go light. You know, we've sort of put down a medium wet coat, and we'll call it done time to bring these colors to life with clear coat. So the products you've been using they're all water based base coats but they are all automotive grade pigments which means you can use acrylic lacquer clear, you can use two pack clear, you can dip them, you can have a look at YouTube you will find there's many different ways to clear coat your fishing lures but for this job I'm going to use the acrylic lacquer clear that I found at Super Cheap Autos, it's dupla color and it works very well with these paints and it doesn't go yellow. A little bit about acrylic lacquer clear if you've got warm to hot conditions you can follow the manufacturer's specifications and you'll get a good result. 
but if you've got cold conditions like we've got now we've got two degrees here right now which means the substrate temperature of the fishing lure is going to be lower than that if i try to clear it what's going to happen is the clear is going to either react and crocodile or it's going to crack it's not the paint we've put on it's going to be the clear coat reacting to the cold weather so what we're going to do is we're going to warm the fishing lure up by putting a fan heater in the area and then we're going to put on a couple of coats drying them with a hair dryer in between coats and that's only going to take 10 to 15 seconds then we're going to build up our coats until we get it nice and glossy now if you go for a really saturated coat it is possible you can get bloom being the fact that it's so cold and that it's going to be a white tinge so i suggest you build up your coats medium to wet and then when you've got it to a stage that you're happy with call it done these are the products we use to create our fishing lures and they're all found at airbrushmegastore.com except for the acrylic lacquer clear. If you need something and you can't find it, send me an email, info at airbrushmegastore.com. I'm there to answer your questions. But for this kit, we use the Iwata Powerjet Pro. It's strong enough to run all day long. It comes with two different air lines on the unit, which means you can run a different air pressure to either side. That is suitable because we wanted to use the Iwata Trigger airbrushes. They're both Neos. Why do we use these? Well, being a trigger, when you release the trigger, the airflow and the material stops. So if you're a beginner airbrush artist, you can get great results immediately. If you try to go straight to a trigger airbrush on top of the airbrush, you going to find that it's going to be harder to use it's going to take a lot longer to get the knack of it don't let that put you off if that's what you want to do go for it but the trigger on the front of the airbrush allows you to get results very quickly now as far as the needle sizes we used a 0.5 mil and a 0.35 mil so the 0.5 mil you'd use for your undercoats and your flakes and the 0.35 mil you would use that for doing your more detailed work so after this we use the Autoborn sealers as our undercoat we used auto wear colors wicked colors and illustration colors as our paint job colors we use v-tape to tape up our designs and we also use the auto wear snacks fishing lure stencil set everyone needs to have these it comes with a multitude of stencils in that set different sizes you can create your scales your gill rakes multiple designs i can't see you doing fishing lures without them and then we used a variety of art tool stencils which gave us a great deal of different designs so if you want to get the results that you've seen in this video grab this gear and you'll get professional results too